Lucy from Woof Links. I'm here today with my dog Ginny and Holly Dwyer, professional pet photographer. We're here in Bramwell Park today to show you how to take better pictures of your dog. So whether you are a dog professional wanting to take better pictures for your clients or whether you just want to improve your Scrooby Snaps for your gorgeous doggo at home, I'm going to show you my top five tips for taking better pictures of your pooch. So tip number one is basically that photography is the art and science of light. So we need to get the lighting right first, okay? Today is pretty pretty bright day. There's not really many clouds in the sky. And most people think that a really sunny day is the best time to take photographs. It's absolutely not. It's one of the worst, okay? Because bright light creates really harsh shadows. You'll end up with a really bright side of the dog and a really dark side of the dog, which we don't want. So a nice cloudy day is perfect. We don't have that today, so we're gonna find some shade. So we found a nice patch of shade. What I've done is we've positioned Ginny to the side of the sun. So we want the sun either behind her or to the side. And we're gonna have Ginny looking out into the sun so that we get the lovely catch lights in her eyes. So tip number two is to make sure that we focus on the eyes. It might sound obvious, um, but with dogs' noses, because they're longer than ours, cameras like to refocus onto their nose, which we don't want. We want your twinkly eyes because eyes are the windows to the soul, aren't they, Ginny? Yes, they are. So ways that we can do that is on your phone, we can tap on the screen on their eyes, or if you're a little bit more into your photography and you've got a DSLR camera, you can switch it to one point focus and make sure that that dot's right over their eyes. So shall we have a go? Yep. Awesome. Number three, Lucy, is to check, um, check out your backgrounds. Yep. So a lot of people focus on just the subject, but forget what's going on behind them in the picture, which can be really important. I see a lot of pictures where it looks like trees are stuck out the back of their heads. Um, or when you just take a second glance at it, you start to notice things, okay? Yep. We're gonna use this archway, and we're gonna basically frame Ginny inside it. So the really important part about this is that we, we move ourselves to make sure that the background's lining up where we want it to line up. So tip number four is creating depth within your images. So this is gonna really elevate your pictures and make them look a lot better than a regular phone snap. What I mean by creating depth is that we're gonna find a little bit of foreground interest. So that might be some flowers, some rocks, some trees, and we're gonna have foreground, midground, which is where Ginny the doggy will be, and then also some background. By moving your subject away from the background, you create a little bit of blur, and this means that your pictures have that professional edge to them. If you don't get the foreground in, it's quite it's not very interesting. It's not really it's all flat. So what you're gonna do, Lucy, is you're gonna bring your phone down to the floor, almost within the leaves, okay? This tip's actually really useful for encouraging you to move your camera down to the dog's eye level, which can create a much more interesting perspective. Amazing, let's get our attention. <laughs> You may have noticed that Ginny here is on a little tie-out stake as well. These are really helpful. They're like five pounds from pets at home. And if you've only got one pair of hands or your dog doesn't like to sit still for very long, this is really good for giving you a little bit extra time to get the shot. Tip number five, and one of the most common things that people ask me is, how do you get the dog to sit still and look at you? Um, I like a mixture of looking and not looking. I think it looks quite nice to be pensive. One of the easiest ways to get the dog's attention is to make daft noises. I've got a whole array of squeakers. We don't have to buy anything expensive. These are literally like 50p dog squeakers. <laughs> we can get party whistles, we've got all sorts. I've got a rabbit noise. <laughs> Apparently that's what noise rabbits make. I've never heard that personally. But you don't have to go out buying things. Not everyone's a weirdo like me carrying around squeakers in their pocket. Um, you can literally just make a noise with your voice. So my favorite one is <laughs> it tends to get their ears pricking up, which is super cute. So you literally think of anything, be creative. Go on, give it a go. <laughs> Very good, Ginny likes that. The yeah. thing is about using the squeakers is that they only last once. So once you've used it, the dog loses its, it's not really very interesting anymore. Um, so you've got to be super, super quick. Ready? So I just want to say a massive thank you to Holly for showing us how to take better pictures of our dog. 
Hopefully that will be helpful to you whether you are a professional or someone that just loves their dog and wants to take some great photos. Um, so follow Holly on Wufflinks or follow her socials which we'll put below for more tips and to have a look at her fantastic work.